Hey folks, as you've probably heard by now, if you read pocketnow.com on the regular, which you should, the new iPhone 6 is coming out. That's not what this video is about. But if you are one of the millions of people planning to pick one up as soon as it becomes available, we have a means of maybe making you some extra cash. For a limited time only, you can get up to $400 when you sell your last gen device on eBay. That's up to $200 more than you can get at other places. Still not sold? eBay is so confident your phone will sell that they'll hook you up with a $100 coupon if it doesn't. Click the link down in the description box to go to www.ebayforthewin.com to see how much your phone is worth. Are you still watching? Why? Go, do it, now. Or watch my video first and then do it. Either way, do both, if you want to. Do whatever you want to. Thanks for watching. The Moto X was my favorite Android smartphone of 2013. It shunned the spec race in favor of a smarter, better user experience, bucking the trend of ever more powerful, bigger smartphones for something different. One year later, the new Moto X changes its size and its specs, but not its spirit. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Join me for Motorola Moto X versus Motorola Moto X. We've only had the new Moto X for a few days, folks, so to be clear, this comparison isn't a full review. If you don't want to miss our full review when it does land, subscribe here on YouTube and bookmark pocketnow.com. Get these things in front of you, and the most striking difference is in size and design. Where last year's Moto X was understated above all, this year's is, well, not. First of all, it's larger in every dimension except for thickness, and you really feel that difference when you're holding it. On the one hand, the new Moto X does have a more sophisticated feel, with the aluminum trim and thinner edges. But on the other, it's sacrificed some of the portability and one-handed usefulness of its predecessor. The custom backing material has definitely gotten an upgrade. Porween leather joins new wooden options in a variety of colors, and the leather feels soft and supple to the touch. Specific elements have been enlarged as well. The most obvious, on the backside, is the finger dimple which was subtle and tiny last year, and now it's a cereal bowl. Same for the camera, which has expanded in diameter to include the new ring flash. More subtle changes include a ribbed texture on the power standby key to help you tell it apart from the volume rocker, and the very welcome move of the speakerphone from back to front. Above that speaker, the display on the new Moto X is much larger, 5.2 inches versus 4.7, and it's also full HD this time around, which renders crisper lines and text. The new screen is still AMOLED, but its color reproduction is sometimes warmer, often with a greener tint than the old device, at least on our review unit. Bordering that display, almost invisible on this black faceplate, are four IR ports, three transmitters and one receiver, which enable the approach functionality new to the Moto X. On the old device, motion was required to trigger the active display when sitting on a table, while the newly renamed and redesigned Moto display reacts to a reach. You can also silence ringers and snooze alarms using the same method. That's one of several handy new functions brought by the Moto X software, a customized build of Android 4.4.4. The new version brings the bigger icons and brighter look of Google's latest launcher, and also anchors Google Now in a permanent slot to the left of the home screen. Also, the Motorola Connect app has been enhanced to support and manage connected devices instead of just serving as a link to your browser on the computer. One of my favorite features of the Moto X, Touchless Control, has been renamed. It's now called Moto Voice to fit in with the Moto Suite, and it's been repainted in lighter colors too. Its functionality is largely unchanged. You can ask it to do everything from setting an alarm clock to taking a selfie, and best of all, you can change the launch phrase to anything you want. Hello, computer. Responsiveness on the whole is a bit tighter, as you'd expect on a brand new device versus one that's been used heavily for nine straight months. But some of this, and the added graphics performance, is also due to the new phone's Snapdragon 801 processor, which is a real monster compared with the old chip. One of the biggest disappointments of last year's Moto X was its 10 megapixel clear pixel camera, which generally underwhelmed in most lighting conditions, even after a software update boosted its saturation and contrast somewhat. The new camera is slightly higher in resolution, and it retains the same viewfinder, which I've always admired for its simplicity. 
You can still double twist your wrist to activate it too, though the newer phone is a little less sensitive, takes a more forceful action. In terms of end results, well, let's just say that the Moto X still wouldn't be my first choice for a smartphone camera. The out-of-box resolution on the new edition defaults to about 10 megapixels to keep the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which I prefer, but the new lens has a narrower field of view, meaning you need to get further away from your subject to fit it on the frame. In good lighting, the new model keeps pace with the old one, even reducing digital noise in a few HDR shots. In automatic, though, the software is less likely to use HDR, which is either a bummer or a boon, depending on your preferences. In low light, the apparent lack of clear pixel technology means the new phone's photos are generally darker, unless you force HDR on. On the brighter side, the flash on the new device is much more powerful, useful in backlit situations, and there's also a time-traveling burst mode for fast-moving objects. The video camera can record in 4K on the new device as well, but you'll have to wait for the full review to see our footage on that. Altogether, I'm not seeing a lot of improvement in the stills here, which is a shame. I was really hoping for a sizable boost in quality. Motorola has always been excellent at the fundamentals of voice calls, and that's no less true here. With a fourth microphone helping out with crystal talk noise reduction, the new Moto X is significantly clearer on phone calls than its predecessor, especially in the presence of background noise. Testing it on AT&T in Greater Boston, callers said I sounded fuller and richer on the new Moto X, which I always like hearing, and the same was true of them on our end. Speakerphone calls and media playback were also helped along by the front-mounted position of the speakerphone, which is sometimes tinnier, but definitely louder than the aft-firing unit from last year. Again, we'll have some more detailed impressions of the new Moto X in our full review. In terms of this comparison, Motorola has succeeded in delivering an improved version of its tightly focused feature set, while also bringing enough of a hardware boost to keep the spec heads happy. Again, I'd like to have seen a bigger jump in camera performance, and I wish the company hadn't felt the need to go so burly with the build. But on the whole, the new Moto X seems a worthy successor to my old favorite. For the full review we've been teasing all this time, stay tuned to PocketNow.com the week of September 15th. Check out episode 113 of the PocketNow Weekly Podcast to get your own Moto X questions answered. And subscribe here on YouTube and on social media so you don't miss any of that. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter. Thanks for watching, keep your control touchless, and we'll see you next time.